Here we've got a solenoid in the middle, and uh, there is a current that's getting stronger over time. And we can see here, it starts off at zero, ends up at 1.1 amps after 2.3 seconds. That's the current going through this solenoid. So we would expect, uh, if we wrap our fingers around, notice that we have the B starting here. It would be basically zero at the beginning, but it's starting to grow bigger and bigger over time. So we'll have a bigger thing like that. Um, now, if that's what's happening inside the solenoid, that means that we would expect inside of the loop over here, um, a counter current going, um, creating a, a, a thing that way. So it would be more like this direction, like that. And uh, this would be coming towards creating um, a negative B in this direction. So that way it would kind of counter that growth. Uh, and so because of this current that's being induced, now this is creating some sort of heat. Um, apparently there's like a resistor inside of there and it's creating some sort of a, a energy, thermal energy dissipation, which we could see from this graph right here. Um, now it's not going all the way to the top over there. So uh, let's keep a note of that. But um, we should also remember that we have this equation called power is joules over seconds. And so that's essentially what we're getting here. Um, let's go ahead and figure out what this what this power is equal to. Uh, it should be like, we have to divide this out because this is one, two, three, four notches out of five. So we'd have 101.8 nanojoules divided by five, and then we multiply that by four. So that's how much we get there. We're at 8.144 e to the negative eight uh, joules there. And then we're gonna divide that by 2.3 seconds. So uh, we get some crazy number, but we'll just basically put 8.144 e to the negative eight joules over 2.3 seconds. And that's essentially what we would have for power. Now we should also know that power is going to be equal to e over r, um, e squared over r, no, v squared over r. This is a EMF, or voltage squared over r. So this is just some equations we should know about power. And now we should be able to figure out what this EMF thing is, because that is supposed to be the time derivative of, and that's negative of course, but you know, we don't really care too much about that usually, but we'll just go ahead and put that in there. And then we have the B, or the flux thing. Let's figure out what that flux is. Um, so flux is supposed to be the integral of B dotted with dA. We know that B is actually gonna be the thing changing over time. Um, so that's essentially what we're gonna get in terms of derivative stuff. But uh, let's, uh, let's figure this out. So we've got the area and this is kind of where I got stuck because I was wondering myself, okay, well, what am I looking at here? This B, it's actually the B of the solenoid. Because that's the only B that matters here. The other one is an induced B. That it's, it's, not, it's not too important. So let's figure out what the B sol is. B from the solenoid should be mu naught with the I, and then we have the N over L. Um, oh, yes, we have been given the rotations per minute here. I think we have... Uh, 8180 turns uh, per meter. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, that, that many per meters, not minutes. But um, it's going to equal 4 pi e to the negative 7 times i. Um, i. Uh, we'll have to figure out what i is. We could put i in terms of i t, like i in terms of t, because then we could say that it would be the slope of this graph, right? We get amps per second, um, uh, 1.1 over 2.3, and then we could put the t in there if we wanted to do this. Is the slope of the line of the t, so zero, and then at 2.3, it would be 1.1, so you could get this expression. So this is what we could put in over here. So we could say 1.1 over 2.3 t for the i. Uh, in terms of t, right? Okay, and then we have the n, which is 8180 divided by the length of one meter. All right, so now we figured out what the b sol is. 
Uh, I'll go ahead and multiply that. I think the cosine is going to be zero degrees, so it's just going to go right into one. And then the dA, if we're to integrate the dA, um, isn't that just going to be the area of uh, a solenoid over here? We're dealing with the solenoid, so it's probably going to be the area of the solenoid that we have to deal with. So we'll go ahead and plug that in there. So A sol is going to be equal to pi r squared, which is pi, and then the radius for this particular one is going to be 2, I forgot, so we've got the radius in here as well, 2.02 .02 centimeters is our radius. So 2.02 .02 centimeters this is just a given, and this is going to be squared. Alright, so we're pretty close. We should be able to get this. Um, this is supposed to be what, like if I multiply the B sol times the A sol, then, um, then this whole expression would be equal to the, the flux. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the d over dt of this whole expression, getting rid of the only t that's in there, and so now I'm left with the emf. Uh, I know that might be a little confusing, but it's basically all these numbers in here. we got the mu naught, and then, um, actually it's not even part of that. It's going to be more like over here. Uh, give me this section right here. So we have 4 pi e to the negative 7, 1.1 1 .1 over 2.3, 81, 80 over 1. This is uh, the first, like, b part here. And then over here, there's the a part, pi, 2.02 .02 centimeters squared. And uh, that's literally uh, the EMF. So let's get to multiplying these two things. 4, negative 7, we'll put the pi in there. I guess I can square the pi because there's two of them. Then we'll have 1.1 1 .1 over 2.3. And there's going to be the 8180. And then there's going to be this thing, 2.02, .02, negative 2 squared. All right, so we have the EMF being equal to 6.3 uh, microvolts. And then we're going to go ahead and um, plug that into this equation by squaring this. And oh, we're actually looking for the resistance here. <laughs> so we um, <clears throat> could rearrange this equation because we would get E squared over P equals the R. So if we square this and then we divide this by the power that we had over here, 88.1 negative 8 divided by 2.3. If we just go ahead and do that, then we should be able to get the resistance. And so we found that resistance is equal to 1.12 uh, negative 3. I guess this would be ohms. All right. Not too bad.